this video, we're going to talk about the 70-page Model Limited Partnership Agreement, or LPA, made publicly available by the Institutional Limited Partners Association, ILPA, in an effort to help LPs in future negotiation with GPs. I'd like to make two comments about this. The first, about waterfalls, and the second, about the intention to reduce side letter negotiation costs and time. Then, I'd like to raise three points for discussion. The first, about the increased authority given to the Limited Partner Advisory Committee, the LPAC. Second, the clauses in reference to the removal of the GP. And third and finally, the standard of care needed for the GP and the fund manager. So let's start with my first comment about waterfalls. The model LPA is written based on a whole of fund or European waterfall. This differs from a deal by deal or American waterfall. If you need a refresher on the difference between these waterfalls, please see our previous video on waterfalls. A whole of fund waterfall is beneficial for LPs since they receive all of their capital back plus a preferred return before performance fees are paid to the GP. While this does mean that GPs have to wait a while to receive distributions, which can hurt the GP since they would need to pay their people, it eliminates a potential clawback scenario that can occur from the deal-by-deal -deal waterfall. With that said, a deal-by-deal -deal waterfall is common in North America, and because there are many additional terms needed in this scenario, ILPA will be creating another model limited partnership agreement for the scenario, which may be out by the timing of the release of this video. My second comment is that ILPA has created this model limited partnership agreement with the intention of reducing side letter negotiation costs and time. Side letters are side agreements that GPs make with certain LPs outside of the limited partnership agreement. Some of these side letters are 20 to 30 pages long. ILPA was hoping to include certain clauses into the LPA that have previously appeared in side letters so that all LPs can benefit from these clauses. One example is the clause that is usually a side letter provision that requires GPs to provide LPs with a list of all other LPs in the fund on a quarterly basis. Now, let's move to the three points of discussion that I wanted to raise. First, let's look at the increased authority given to the Limited Partner Advisory Committee, or the LPAC. There are quite a few points in this model LPA that do this, but I'd just like to point out section 7.1.4.5, where it states that the GP needs written approval from the LPAC to make follow-on investments after a certain amount of time after the termination of the commitment period. The document puts 18 months as a suggested amount of time. Now, for me, the question would be if the LPAC deserves this type of authority. Maybe? or maybe not. Second, let's look at the clauses in reference to removal of the GP. One thing I'd like to mention is that a GP can be removed without cause upon an LP vote threshold. In addition, even if the removal was without cause, the GP would lose a certain portion of the carried interest from previous investments. I could see some GPs objecting to this clause. Our third and final point for discussion is the level of detail in the LPA on standard of care. While comments are usually made about standard of care, this document goes into detail by saying, and I quote, the general partner and the fund manager each shall manage and control the fund and its business and affairs reasonably and in good faith and with the care that an ordinarily prudent person in a like position would exercise under similar circumstances. Then the section goes on to clarify to make sure there is no misinterpretation by saying, and I quote again, for the avoidance of doubt, the general partner and the fund manager each shall exercise its good faith, discretion, sole discretion, reasonable discretion, reasonable and good faith discretion, or other subjective standard of care set forth in this agreement. Now, current LP agreements may mention fiduciary duty, 
but this model LPA explicitly states the details behind it. One could argue that as long as everyone is acting in good faith, this clause is beneficial for all parties involved. Before we conclude, I would like to thank Chris Hayes from ILPA and Batya Nadler from Tories for their insights that helped quite a lot with this video. Their support was invaluable in making this video. In this video, we talked about the 70-page model limited partnership agreement, or LPA, made publicly available by ILPA in an effort to help LPs in future negotiations with GPs. We made two comments, the first about waterfalls and the second about the intention to reduce side letter negotiation costs and time. Then we brought up three points for discussion. The first about the increased authority given to the Limited Partner Advisory Committee or the LPAC. Second, the clauses in reference to the removal of the GP. And third, the details of the standard of care needed for the GP and the fund manager. We did our best to provide the facts to stimulate a discussion. Please leave your comments below if you have any thoughts about the model LPA.